Hello, this is Tommy. Welcome to Chatomics. So today I'm going to show you how to use the Human Protein Atlas to find genes that are tissue specific or cell type specific. And then later in the video, I will show you how can you use uh, R programmatically to access this database and exploit uh, in, inside R. So this is the website that you need to go to, proteinatlas.org. So first, you can actually just search for a single gene. For example, FOXP3 is a T rectory cell marker. So if I just do search, and I click here, and we'll show you all the information for uh, FOXP3 related uh, uh, entries here. So you can look at RNA or tissue expression. And if you click uh, immune here, and you can also sort this uh, expression value, uh, those bars by the expression values, you see it's uh, the highest in the T-Rack. So Protein Atlas actually serves as a really good tool for you to quickly check uh, the marker genes if you have that in mind. Uh, let me show you actually how to use R to programmatically access the database. Let's go back to R Studio. And we will actually use uh, HPA Analyze, this uh, bioconductor package. So if you Google, there are multiple actual packages uh, that are developed to access this database. So this is just one of them. So if you don't have it, so you use BIOS C Manager to install this package. So I've already done that. So let me just load that, uh, this library and also together with Tidyverse. So then you can use this functional HPA download to download the sum of the data sets. You can specify what kind of data set you want to download. So most of the time you will only need this histology data sets. And this one actually contains uh, three different data, data frames like normal tissue, pathology, so mostly cancers, and the subcellular location. Okay, so let's do that. So you see uh, R is downloading this uh, data set is like only five megabyte. Okay. So, okay, just three different uh, tables actually. So if you look at this one, the downloaded data, it's a large list. So which contains three different elements and three uh, data frames. So if you just say names of this list, you'll see there's three actual names, uh, three uh, elements list, normal tissue, pathology, and subcellular location. Okay, let's take a look at the first table, normal tissue. And this normal uh, tissue uh, data set contains information about the protein expression profiles in human tissues based on the IHC staining, so it's at the protein level. So this data sets contain uh, six columns here. So we can take a look at the first six uh, rows for this data frame. So you use the dollar sign to access that element, uh, that data frame, and then pipe it to head. So it's a one, it's a one data frame. Uh, it's a one data frame with six different columns. So uh, you have the ensemble ID, gene uh, symbol, and the tissue, the cell type and the expression level. So whether it's not detected, median or high, and then you have the reliability. So you can look at actually uh, what entries are actually available in this data set. So what I usually do, so I use the table function and then use the dollar sign again to access one of the columns here, so level. And you see actually in this column, it contains either ascending, descending, high, low, median, and A are not detected or not representative. So I'm not sure what's, what's the meaning of those two, but uh, I think most of the entries are high, low, or median are not detected. Okay. So, so next step, uh, for example, if we really want to find uh, the genes that are smooth muscle cells specific and and you want to find those genes or you want 
so what we can do is we can first filter the cell type equals to smooth muscle cells. And uh, I'm using this a new uh, function called uh, TB, TABYL. So it's a it's very similar to the table function, the native table function, but this one works on uh, data frames. So if you do this, and then you'll see actually for smooth muscle cells, actually it can be present in two different tissues, endometrial or smooth muscle. So just one a general suggestion. So you want to actually explore the data frame by using table, by uh, using unique and sort and to get a general idea like what kind of actual entries in each column. Okay. And so what we can do is, uh, because now this data frame is in the long format, so you see actually the same gene repeated in, in multiple rows. So, and then uh, each row uh, we represent different tissue or different cell type. But you may actually want to look at, uh, at uh, uh, per, per gene level. So you have one, one gene uh, per row and then different columns represent different tissues or different cell types. So the pivot wider function from tidyr, so it's part of the tidyverse, system, uh, tidyverse system, uh, ecosystem. And then you can specify the names that you want to actually uh, so pivot wide means you want to turn this long format data frame to wider uh, data frame. So the names from will be like tissue and cell type, like here. And the values from will be level. So if you do this, let's actually just run this uh, first. And we'll make this long format data to wide format. So I will show you how it looks like. Uh, so you can pipe it to view to look at it. So if you do this, now essentially those columns are the same, right? But now each row will be a, a unique gene, but each column will be the combination of the tissue and an underscore uh, cell type. Does that make sense? Okay. And if you want to find, for example, a uh, smooth muscle cell, uh, specific uh, genes, what you can do after you actually change to this uh, wide format, and you can select, only filter the rows, the smooth muscle and smooth muscle cells, only in high or median. So if you do that, you see how many so you have you end up with our uh, 3800 genes so if you view data so this data frame only contains the, the genes that are uh, high or median for uh, the smooth muscle cells in the smooth muscle uh, tissue okay that's pretty cool, and and let's now look at the other data frame. So the the sub cellular location. Okay, so this is the data frame, and you always want to look at the first several rows of the data frame, and you see. So each row is one gene, and each column is some uh, information. So whether uh, the main location is in the cell membrane, the plasma memory, or in, in, in the cytosol, things like that. Okay, again, you want to look at uh, what kind of entries that are available in one of the columns, and you do the dollar sign and do table. You can also do sort, and you see, okay, how many genes are in the cytosomes, how many genes are in the mitochondrial, things like that. So what I will do is that I will uh, filter genes that are membrane pro uh, proteins. So I will uh, pipe it to filter this function. And uh, for the main location, as long as it contains plasma membrane or cell membrane, then 
I consider it as a potential member engine. So if I do that, so let's see how many of those genes. So roughly 1,500 such uh, cell membrane genes. And now you can actually interjoin the previous data frame with, uh, with this membrane genes. And so now you have um, a tissue specific gene expression data frame together with the, uh, the uh, location of those genes. Okay. Uh, lastly, I want to show you a trick uh, so you can actually visualize the data in a heat map. So, okay, let's only filter the original data. Uh, or filter only the genes that are in the membrane in the membrane uh, pro, uh, in the membrane. So you use this as a data frame and select the genes. Uh, I think that's like a thousand five hundred something. So only filter those genes in the original data frame. So now if you look at data two, so you essentially you have almost 300 genes that are cell membrane, but all uh, they're cell membrane genes there, but they are also actually expressed at a high level in the smooth muscle cells, okay? Okay, now I will turn this uh, data two into a data frame, no, into a matrix. So I will remove the first three columns like this, and use S to matrix to turn it to a, uh, to a matrix, and give the row names uh, as the gene name. So with that, uh, so you can make a heat map. So this is a character matrix, but you can still use the, the heat map function from the complex heat map to make a heat map. Okay, let's do that. And you see, okay, so now each row is one gene, each column is one tissue by cell type. And, and those colors denotes, okay, whether the, median, the expression value is median, is not detected, low or high. Okay, so, and those gray are just like NA, so by default it will be NA. So you'll see actually most of them are probably median level, but this probably there's still too many uh, genes here, so it's a little bit hard to see. Okay. Okay, uh, that's it for today. Uh, by the way, so I highly recommend you to check the complex heat map uh, uh, package tutorial. It's super, super powerful, and I also have um, two other videos on heat map using complex heat map in the same uh, channel so make sure you check them out so that's it for today uh, uh, thanks for watching it and i hope you learn a ton and make sure you subscribe it so happy learning see you next time